obviously on a, a tight time frame here, but uh, we wanted to uh, take a moment for you all to ask the governor some questions. Obviously, I'm honored to have the governor here on my behalf. He's been so kind to endorse our campaign, and obviously, uh, Governor Huckabee is the voice of the conservative movement in America these days, so uh, we are proud of that honor to, to have that endorsement. And so I'm just going to turn it over to the governor and you okay. guys fire away and ask him whatever questions you may have. Hey, Governor. How are you Good. doing? Good. Well, I hope the conservative movement uh, is not uh, dependent upon me. If it's come down to that, <laughs> we're in real trouble. But Dan, it's an honor and pleasure to be here. Thank you. Uh, governor, uh, what brings you to North Carolina and uh, uh, how long have you known uh, Mr. Forrest here and his uh, uh, campaign for office? And well, I've known of him okay. uh, oh, for several months during the course of his primary, and but we had not met until today, and I okay. just found out uh, that his mother is a dear friend of mine and somebody I love and respect very much, uh, Congresswoman Sue Meyer. So I like him even more, I told him. <laughs> but uh, no, I'm, I'm here strictly for him, and that's the only thing I'll be doing in North Carolina today and tonight. Okay. Um, you're uh, in tune with politics so much, and you have your show and all that. Uh, if you were uh, running Governor Romney's campaign, what would you do different, if anything, and, and how would you reach out to the voters between now and the elections? You know, it's always so easy to second-guess somebody else's campaign. Everyone always second-guess mine. The only thing I'd do is tell Governor Romney to get down here to North Carolina and help Dan, and uh, then that make sure he won North Carolina. Uh, what do you think about uh, uh, some things going on in Washington, D.C. in terms of uh, deficit and, and the economy in general? What are your thoughts on what needs to be changed? I mean, clearly, the uh, I think the lack of having good business people, common sense, is killing us. Uh, they're spending money we don't have, borrowing money we can't afford to pay back. I think every election really becomes a referendum on common sense in America. And uh, it, it's a good example of even this election for lieutenant governor, you got one person who's not a career politician, hasn't spent his life in government, spending out there where you have to make a payroll, hire and fire people, you have to build clients, you have to build them that which is competitive, uh, and you have to do a quality job because if you don't, you don't get the work. Government is a place where you don't have to necessarily have quality because it's hard to get fired in government. Um, you can spend money without regard to how it's going to be paid for because the legislature will just dole out some more. And I think, uh, you know, in this case for North Carolina, this is a classic uh, contest between one person who spent a lifetime in government and one who spent a lifetime uh, on the receiving end of all the sticks that the government hits us with. So uh, hopefully people in North Carolina, and I hope across the country, will understand this election, not just in North Carolina, but across the country, is really a referendum on common sense. Okay. Uh, I told some people I was coming here today to meet you, and they said, uh, uh, they wanted to ask you how you uh, dealt with your, your weight issues. You had lost a lot of weight, and it was kind yeah. of a, uh, I guess, inspiring thing for other people. What would you tell people who are trying to get in shape? And, and well, it's, it's been a battle all my life. I put about 30 pounds back on. Uh, messed up my knee running the New York Marathon. That was my fourth marathon. Never quite gotten over that. And, um, you know, but I mean, I still try to take care of myself. I, you know, exercise usually five, sometimes six days a week. and uh, But it, it's it's a battle, and I think in part the culture that we live in makes it tough. But I ultimately understand it's my responsibility. You know, it's not somebody else's, it's mine. Uh, what is your future on uh, television versus politics? Are you going to go back in uh, politics? Uh, what are your plans? Are? Uh, good question. I don't rule anything out. You know, I, I'll see. But, what, if somebody asked me four years ago, do you plan to be, you know, doing radio and television? I, I probably would have said, "Gee, no. I was hoping to be in the White House, but that didn't pan out. So, you know, here I am. I guess if this career doesn't work out, I can always go back and run for president again." All right. Okay. Um, One more question. Okay. Okay. Uh, last question. Uh, in terms of politics, uh, it seems to be uh, in the primaries. You know, people kind of cater to the. Um, you know, the hardcore or extreme elements of both parties, uh, so there's a lot of independents uh, kind of in the middle. How do both parties, Democratic and Republican, reach out to those voters who may not, you know, be responsive to the things we see in the primaries? Yeah, I think it's a very, very valid question, and it's 
it'll obviously be a question that'll decide the presidential, but you know, apply to a local race. And I still think people are going to ask themselves, which of these two people has a similar experience as me? Which one of these folks will understand the world I live in? And frankly, I think most independent voters are independent because, um, you know, they're not eaten up with government all the time. That's not what they do. They're just not that focused on it. Because people who are the hardcore Republicans, the hardcore Democrats, they are focused on issues. They're not undecided. They know exactly how they're going to vote. What about those folks in the middle? They just want to go to work every day, bring home enough of a paycheck to keep gas in their car, food on their table, clothes on their kids' back, and hopefully have a little left over for some fun. And I think they've got to ask which one of these candidates or people running for office is best going to help me live that life. I think in a race like this, it gets pretty easy. One believes that you don't help those folks if you raise their taxes and if you create more government that's got to be paid for somewhere, going into debt. Um, one of these candidates really believes that you know what you do is make sure there's good jobs that pay well and keep the government from interfering in that process of not only recruiting the jobs, but keeping them and making them prosperous and competitive. And you know, I, I know enough about North Carolina to know that one of the challenges it faces, it's, uh, its tax structure is tougher than most of the states around in the southeast. Now, to its credit, it has an incredible um, high tech sector, great education system here. So there's a lot of pluses. But somebody who's been in the private sector who understands some of the challenges that one faces from government to recruit business and to keep business and to be competitive, I think that, that ought to make it real easy for an independent voter. Great. Can we get Thank some pictures of you guys much. together real quick? Sure, sure. Okay.